Hey everyone. Okay, so right from the jump, we got to talk about that ending moment of the episode where it's revealed that Vivian and Wapple are now traveling with Big News Morgans after seemingly escaped from the Reverie. Now, this of course raises a few questions, like what are they escaping from, and also what happened to Cobra? This, which, just from all of this, you can pretty much tell this is setting the stage that some real shit went down at the Reverie. And the thing is, with Jay Garcia having appeared on Egghead, these two things are far from a coincidence. Like, something something happened where the Elders feel they have to get even more involved. And whatever happened to Cobra, you can definitely tell it's, it's, it's one of those things where Cobra himself, he was asking way too many questions. Like, something happened at the Reverie where Cobra met with the... had met with had had kind of just was asking far too many questions and then the government stepped in yeah you can probably tell you can probably guess where the, where this is all headed where this is all headed for cope when when we do cut back to like when you do make like a time a, a time leap backwards and kind of like learn what happened to cobra you can probably take a like a wild guess what probably happened to him. Um, also, as someone who is revisiting this material with the anime, I kind of believe more now than ever that Vivi hiding on board Morgan's blimp is really only a temporary thing, and that at some point in in the story, as as it exists now, we are going to see her reunite with the crew. Because without giving away spoilers, like again, it's kind of getting into that thing where. We're getting into the point of the story where Vivi's character becomes unexpectedly important. Unfortunately, this reveal also does does kind of remind me just how much Toei kind of fucked with the Reverie arc. Because, yeah, you are going to start... Th this is one of the things, I think, what, why... I get, I get the reasoning why Toei had to sacrifice that arc. But it still does suck that they chose to go do that. Because you are going to start to see the Reverie arc play like, kind of come back into play with into Egghead more and more, honestly, beyond this point. Like, the Reverie arc is kind of one of those where that does kind of seep more and more into Egghead narratively. Um, <clears throat> with that said, I do think the most satisfying moment of this episode was probably when the Mark III pacifista came in and just started wrecking the, wrecking the government. And, like, it's one of those things where, while I admire their guts for trying to fight back, like, seriously, dudes... The moment half your guys gets wiped out, that's the moment you surrender. Not keep, not to keep fighting until there's only like what three or four of you left, or better yet, like just don't ask quest ask questions. You just run and get the fuck out of dodge. Like, drop the guns, run. That's all you fucking do. Okay. When when you meet a Mark III pacifista like that, you just run. Do not do anything else. But okay, obviously the bigger but okay the bigger part of this of this part of the episode to talk about, is we see Bonnie take her first look into Kuma's past, where I see him as a kid and curled him in a ball crying. And, yeah, this is where the tragedy of Kuma, Kuma's life really begins to unravel before Bonnie, but you could also say this is where his indomitable spirit and resolve was truly born. It was when he was a kid where who Kuma is now is who he... Who, where a lot of what happened in his past is what Kum, is what caused Kuma to become who he, who he is now. And uh, truthfully, Bonnie is not prepared for what she's about to discover in his memories. But at the same time, it's the only way she's ever going to be able to move forward. Otherwise, she'll remain in denial for the rest of her life. That's that's kind of one of those. It's it's truly one of those things that's kind of sad that she has to go through with this. But she has. But she does have to go through with this in order to truly understand what's what's happening with her father and just that her journey kind of needs to come to an end, even if she doesn't want it to. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, there's not too much more to say as everyone kind of gathers together and reunites in the lava phase. But one little exchange I do like in this part of the episode is when Nami, like, kind of threatens a, an unconscious Kaku and Luchi about coming after Robin, and the latter responding by saying she appreciates the thought, but 
she's fine. And again, it's a small moment that does show Robin truly has grown out of her immediate fear of the government. At least to the point where, even if she still thinks there are reasons to fear the C her CP0 and the government as a whole, people like Lucci and Kaku don't evoke that same fear because she has learned there are threats the Striats can overcome. So it's... So again, a nice little, a nice bit of character growth on Robin's part. Um, <clears throat> that aside, the rest, the rest of the episode is pretty much the Straw Hats going off into separate groups and to find Vegapunk. And I love how Zoro says he's just gonna join. He says he's gonna join the effort. I love how what what was when Zoro says he's gonna join the effort. Sanji and Chopper like immediately stop him and tell him to stay in the Labosphere because you know. His sense of direction just kind of fucking sucks. Like, it's, it's, they're still kind of playing, they're still kind of treating him like a fucking child and saying, just stay here, you'll be fine, as long as you stay fucking here. It's like, they're still treating him like a child, but when it comes to him, you kind of have to in order to really get him to stay in one place. Otherwise, he's just going to go off doing whatever the fuck he wants. And granted, that would probably be a good thing in this case, but... At the same time, when it comes to just tracking someone down, you know he's gonna... You do kind of know he's gonna cause more trouble than... Than actually, like... Actually helping. So, I, I guess in that sense, that there's... It's both kind of right, but kind of wrong to keep him in the labosphere. Uh, but... Yeah, guys. That's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Analyst Crunchyroll, be sure to hit the bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of Anime, signing off. Later, everyone.